BT Group plc, trading as BT, is a British multinational telecommunications services company with head offices in London, England, United Kingdom. It has operations in around 170 countries. Through its BT Global Services division it is a supplier of telecom services to corporate and government customers worldwide. Its BT Retail division is a supplier of telephony, broadband and subscription television services in GB, with circa 18 million customers. BT's origins date back to the founding of the Electric Telegraph Company in 1846 which developed a nationwide communications network. In 1912, the General Post Office, a government department, became the monopoly telecom supplier in GB. The Post Office Act of 1969 led to the GPO becoming a public corporation. British Telecommunications, trading as British Telecom, was formed in 1980, and became independent of the Post Office in 1981. British Telecommunications was privatised in 1984, becoming British Telecommunications plc, with some 50% of its shares sold to investors. The government sold its remaining stake in further share sales in 1991 and 1993. BT has a primary listing on the London Stock Exchange and is a constituent of the FTSE 100 Index. History BT's origins date back to the establishment of the first telecommunications companies in Britain. Among them was the first commercial telegraph service, the Electric Telegraph Company, established in 1846. As these companies amalgamated and were taken over or collapsed, the remaining companies were transferred to state control under the post office in 1912. These companies were merged and rebranded as British Telecom, 1878-1969. In January 1878 Alexander Graham Bell demonstrated his recently developed telephone to Queen Victoria at Osborne House on the Isle of Wight. A few days later the first telephone in Britain was installed, under license from the General Post Office, by engineers from David Mosley and Sons, to connect the Dantzig Street premises of Manchester hardware merchant, Mr John Hudson, with his other premises in nearby Shud Hill. As the number of installed telephones across the country grew it became sensible to consider constructing telephone exchanges to allow all the telephones in each city to be connected together. The first exchange was opened in London in August 1879, closely followed by the Lancashire Telephonic Exchange in Manchester. From 1878, the telephone service in Britain was provided by private sector companies such as the National Telephone Company, and later by the General Post Office. In 1896, the National Telephone Company was taken over by the General Post Office. In 1912 it became the primary supplier of telecommunications services, after the post office took over the private sector telephone service in GB, except for a few local authority services. Those services all folded within a few years, the sole exception being Kingston-upon-Hull, where the telephone department became present day KCOM Group. Telegraph and telephone services became the exclusive responsibility of the post office engineering department. Public corporation, converting the post office into a nationalized industry, as opposed to a governmental department, was first discussed in 1932 by Lord Womer. In 1932 the Bridgman Committee produced a report that was rejected. In 1961, more proposals were ignored. The post office remained a department of central government, with the postmaster general sitting in cabinet as a secretary of state. In March 1965, Tony Benn, the acting postmaster general, wrote to Harold Wilson, the prime minister, proposing that studies be undertaken aimed at converting the post office into a nationalized industry. A committee was set up to look into the advantages and disadvantages of the proposal, and its findings were found to be favorable enough for the government to re-establish a steering group on the organization of the post office. After some initial deliberations that the business should be divided into five divisions. Post, Telecommunications, Savings, Gyro and National Data Processing Services, it was decided that there should be two, Post and Telecommunications. These events finally resulted in the introduction of the Post Office Act, 1969. On October 1, 1969, under the Post Office Act of 1969, 
the post office ceased to be a government department and it became established as a public corporation. The Act gave the post office the exclusive privilege of operating telecommunications systems with listed powers to authorize others to run such systems. Effectively, the General Post Office retained its telecommunications monopoly. 1969 to 1982, in 1977, the Carter Committee report recommended a further division of the two main services and for their relocation under two individual corporations. The findings contained in the report led to the renaming of Post Office Telecommunications as British Telecommunications in 1980, although it remained part of the Post Office. The British Telecommunications Act 1981 transferred the responsibility for telecommunications services from the Post Office, creating two separate corporations, Post Office Limited and British Telecommunications. At this time the first steps were taken to introduce competition into British telecommunications industry. In particular, the Act empowered the Secretary of State for Trade and Industry, as well as British Telecommunications, to license other operators to run public telecommunications systems. Additionally, a framework was established which enabled the Secretary of State to set standards with the British Standards Institution for apparatus supplied to the public by third parties and had the effect of requiring British telecommunications to connect approved apparatus to its systems. The Secretary of State made use of these new powers and began the process of opening up the apparatus supply market, where a phased program of liberalization was started in 1981. In 1982, a license was granted to cable and wireless to run a public telecommunications network through its subsidiary, Mercury Communications Limited. 1982 to 1991, on July 19, 1982, the government formally announced its intention to privatize British telecommunications with a sale of up to 51% of the company's shares to private investors. This intention was confirmed by the passing of the Telecommunications Act 1984, which received royal assent on April 12 that year. The transfer to British Telecommunications plc of the business of British Telecommunications the Statutory Corporation, took place on August 6, 1984 and, on November 20, 1984, more than 50% of British telecommunications shares were sold to the public. At the time, this was the largest share issue in the world. The new legislation was intended to enable British telecommunications to become more responsive to competition in GB and to expand its operations globally. Commercial freedom granted to British telecommunications allowed it to enter into new joint ventures and, if it so decided, to engage in the manufacture of its own apparatus. The company's transfer into the private sector continued in December 1991 when the government sold around half its remaining holding of 47.6% of shares, reducing its stake to 21.8%. Substantially all the government's remaining shares were sold in a third flotation in July 1993 raising a £5 a billion for the Treasury and introducing 750,000 new shareholders to the company. The 1984 Act also abolished British Telecommunications' exclusive privilege of running telecommunications systems and established a framework to safeguard the workings of competition. This meant that British Telecommunications finally lost its monopoly in running telecommunications systems, which it had technically retained under the 1981 Act despite the Secretary of State's licensing powers. It now required a license in the same way as any other telecommunications operator. The principal license granted to British Telecommunications laid down strict and extensive conditions affecting the range of its activities, including those of manufacture and supply of apparatus. Your next major development for British Telecommunications and a move towards a more open market in telecommunications, occurred in 1991. On March 5, the government's white paper, Competition and Choice, Telecommunications Policy for the 1990s, was issued. In effect, it ended the duopoly which had been shared by British Telecommunications and Mercury Communications in the UK since November 1983 and the build-up to privatisation. The new policy enabled customers to acquire telecommunications services from competing providers using a variety of technologies. Independent retail companies were permitted to bulk by telecommunications capacity and sell it in packages to business and domestic users. 
The white paper was endorsed by British Telecommunications, the new policy enabling the company to compete freely and more effectively by offering flexible pricing packages to meet the needs of different types of customer. 1991-2001, on April 2, 1991, the company started using a new trading name, BT, and branding. In December 2000, following modifications to BTA Euro unregistered trademark S license in April 2000, BT offered local loop and bundling to other telecommunications operators, enabling them to use BTA Euro unregistered trademark S copper local loops to connect directly with their customers. Concert In June 1994, BT and MCI Communication Corporation, the second largest carrier of long distance telecommunications services in the United States, launched Concert Communications Services, a $1 a billion joint venture company. This alliance gave BT and MCI a global network for providing end-to-end -end connectivity for advanced business services. Concert was the first company to provide a single source broad portfolio of global communications services for multinational customers. On November 3, 1996, BT and MCI announced they had entered into a merger agreement to create a global telecommunications company called Concert PLC, to be incorporated in GB with headquarters in both London and Washington, D.C. As part of the alliance BT acquired a 20% holding in MCI. Nevertheless, following U.S. carrier WorldCom's rival bid for MCI on October 1, 1997, BT ultimately decided in November, to sell its stake in MCI to WorldCom for $7 a billion. The deal with WorldCom resulted in a profit of more than $2 a billion on BT's original investment in MCI with an additional $465 a million severance fee for the breakup of the proposed merger. Selnet 02 In 1985, Selnet was launched as a subsidiary of Telecom Securica Cellular Radio Limited, a 60-40 venture between British Telecommunications and Securica respectively. Securica originally invested a £4 a million in Selnet in 1983. In 1999, BT purchased Securica's shares in Selnet for a £3.15 a billion. The company was later rebranded as BT Selnet, and it became a part of BT Wireless, a group of subsidiary companies owned by BT. In October 2001, at a general meeting held in Birmingham, 4.297 a billion British telecommunications shares voted in favour of the demerger, and 0 0.67 a million voted against. In 2001, a 2001, BT Selnet demerged from BT and was relaunched on 18 a junior 2002 a June 18, 2002, as O2. Then in March 2005, the company underwent a corporate reorganization that saw a mo 2 PLC being delisted from the London Stock Exchange and acquired by a new company, O2 PLC, which was listed on the London Stock Exchange in its place and then ultimately acquired by Telefer Cubed Nika in 2007. 2001 to 2006. Following the dot com crash, the group undertook a board restructuring and asset sale to address its large debts. In May 2001, BT announced a 3 for 10 rights issue to raise a £5.9 a billion a euro, still GB's largest ever rights issue euro, and the sale of Yale Group, the international directories and associated e commerce business, for a £2.14 a billion. Both activities were completed in June 2001. The group also sold its property portfolio to Telerial, a property company. In April 2003, BT unveiled its current corporate identity and brand values. Reflecting the aspirations of a technologically innovative future, the connected world is designed to embody BTA Euro unregistered trademark S5 corporate values, trustworthy, helpful, inspiring, straightforward. Heart. The Communications Act, 2003, which came into force on July 25, 2003, introduced a new industry regulator, the Office of Communications, to replace the Office of Telecommunications. It also introduced a new regulatory framework. The licensing regime was replaced by a general authorization for companies to provide telecommunications services subject to general conditions of entitlement and in some instances, specific conditions. 
under a specific condition BT retained its universal service obligation for GB, excluding the Hull area. The USO included connecting consumers to the fixed telephone network, schemes for consumers with special social needs, and the provision of call box services. In the summer of 2004, BT launched Consult 21, an industry consultation for BTA Euro unregistered trademark S21st century network program. 21CN is a next generation network transformation that, at one time, was due for completion by the end of 2010. Using Internet Protocol technology, 21CN will replace the existing networks and communications from any device such as mobile phone, PC, PDA, or home phone, to any other device. In 2004, BT was awarded the contract to deliver and manage N3, a secure and fast broadband network for the NHS National Programme for IT Programme, on behalf of the English National Health Service. In 2005 BT made a number of important acquisitions. In February 2005, BT acquired Infinite, a large telecoms company based in El Segundo, California, giving BT access to new geographies. It also acquired the second largest telecoms operator in the Italian business market, Olbacom. Then in April 2005, it bought Radians from Reuters, which expanded BT's coverage and provided BT with more buying power in certain countries. Ope Reach Following the Telecommunications Strategic Review, in September 2005 BT signed legally binding undertakings with Ofcom to help create a new regulatory framework for BT and GB telecoms industry generally. Openreach provides provision and repair in the last mile of copper wire and is formed from 25,000 engineers previously employed by BT's retail and wholesale divisions. It is designed to ensure that other communications providers have exactly the same operational conditions as parts of the BT group. It opened for business on January 11, 2006 and reports directly into the BT chief executive. 2006 to present in August 2006 BT acquired online electrical retailer Dabs.com for a £30.6 a million. The BT Home Hub manufactured by Inventil was also launched in June 2006. In October 2006 BT confirmed that it would be investing 75% of its total capital spending, put at a £10 a billion over five years, in its new Internet Protocol-based 21st century network. Annual savings of a £1 a billion per annum were expected when the transition to the new network was to have been completed in 2010, with over 50% of its customers to have been transferred by 2008 that month. The first customers onto 21CN was successfully tested at Adastral Park in Suffolk. In January 2007, BT acquired Sheffield-based ISP, plus Net PLC, adding an additional 200,000 customers. BT stated that PlusNet will continue to operate separately out of its Sheffield head office. On February 1, 2007, BT announced agreed terms to acquire International Network Services Incorporated, an international provider of IT consultancy and software. This increases BT presence in North America enhancing BT's consulting capabilities. On February 20, 2007, Sir Michael Rake, then chairman of accountancy firm KPMG International, succeeded Sir Christopher Bland, who stepped down in September of that year. On April 20, 2007, BT acquired CompSat International which provides network services to the South American corporate market. On October 1, 2007, BT purchased Chesterfield-based Lynx technology which has been trading since 1973. BT acquired Wire One Communications in June 2008 and folded the company into BT Conferencing, its existing conferencing unit, as a new video business unit in July 2008. BT acquired the online business directory firm Upfinders for a £20 million in order to expand its position in the local information market in GB. On July 28, 2008, BT acquired Ribbit, of Mountain View, California. Silicon Valley's first phone company. Ribbit provides Adobe Flash Flex APIs, allowing web developers to incorporate telephony features into their software as a service applications. On April 1, 2009, 
BT Engage IT was created from the merger of two previous BT acquisitions, Lynx Technology and Basilica. Apart from the name change not much else changed in operations for another 12 months. On May 14, 2009, BT said it was cutting up to 15,000 jobs in the coming year after it announced its results for the year to March 31, 2009. Then in July 2009 BT offered workers a long holiday for an upfront sum of 25% of their annual wage or a one-off payment of a £1,000 if they agreed to go part-time. On August 1, 2013, BT launched its first television channels, BT Sport, to compete with rival broadcaster Sky Sports. Plans for the channel's launch came about when it was announced in June 2012 that BT had been awarded a package of broadcast rights for the Premier League from the 2013 Euro 14 to 2015 Euro 16 season, broadcasting 38 matches from each season. In February 2013, BT acquired ESPN Incorporated's UK and Ireland TV channels, continuing its expansion into sports broadcasting. ESPN America and ESPN Classic were both closed, while ESPN continued to be operated by BT. On November 9 BT announced it had acquired exclusive rights to the Champions League and Europa League for a £897 million, from the 2015 season, with some free games remaining including both finals. Operations British Telecommunications PLC is a wholly owned subsidiary of BT Group PLC and encompasses virtually all businesses and assets of the BT Group. BT Group PLC is listed on stock exchanges in London and New York. BT runs the telephone exchanges, trunk network and local loop connections for the vast majority of British fixed-line telephones. Currently BT is responsible for approximately 28 million telephone lines in GB. Apart from Kingston Communications, which serves Kingston upon Hull, BT is the only UK telecoms operator to have a universal service obligation, which means it must provide a fixed telephone line to any address in the UK. It is also obliged to provide public call boxes. BT's businesses are operated under special government regulation by the British telecoms regulator Ofcom. BT has been found to have significant market power in some markets following market reviews by Ofcom. In these markets, BT is required to comply with additional obligations such as meeting reasonable requests to supply services and not to discriminate, as well as continuing to provide service in those traditional areas in which BT has an obligation to provide services or is closely regulated. BT has expanded into more profitable products and services where there is less regulation. These are principally, broadband internet service and bespoke solutions in telecommunications and information technology. Divisions, BT Group is organized into the following divisions, Customer Facing, BT Global Services A Euro provides IT and telecom services to multinationals, BT Retail A Euro provides retail telecom services to businesses and consumers, BT Wholesale A Euro operates BT's networks. Openreach a Euro fenced off wholesale division, responsible for the last mile of BT's access network and GB and tasked with ensuring that rival operators have equality of access to BT's local network. Internal service unit, BT Technology, Service and Operations a Euro responsible for the innovation, design, test, build and running of BT a Euro unregistered trademark s global networks and systems. Headquarters. BT Group's world headquarters and registered office is the BT Centre, a 10-storey office building at 81 Newgate Street in the City of London, opposite St Paul's Tube Station. Corporate Affairs, Financial Performance, BT's financial results have been as follows, Pension Fund, BT has the largest defined benefit pension plan of any UK public company. The trustees valued the scheme at £36.7 a billion at the end of 2010. An actuarial valuation valued the deficit of the scheme at £9.043 a billion as of December 31, 2008. However following a change in the regulations governing inflation index linking, the deficit was estimated at £5.2 a billion in November 2010. 
FBT and the trustee have agreed a 17-year recovery plan with the first three years a euro on registered trademark payments amounting to a £525 um. As of 2013 average annual payments have been estimated at a £533 million. The next triennial valuation is scheduled for 2014. BTA Euro unregistered trademark S pension obligation is derived from two pension plans, BTPS, the Companion Euro unregistered trademark S defined benefit pension scheme which was closed in 2001, and the BT retirement savings scheme, which was set up to replace the BTPS and is a defined contribution retirement plan. Logo, the current BT corporate logo, Connected World, was adopted in 2003. The globe device part of the logo was originally designed by the Wolf Olin's brand consultancy for BT's concert joint venture with AT&T, and was subsequently used by BT's internet division, Open World, prior to being adopted by the company as a whole. Environmental Record In 2004 the BT Group signed the world's largest renewable energy deal with NPOWER and British Gas, and now all of their exchanges, satellite networks and offices are powered by renewable energy. BT is a member of the Corporate Leaders Group on Climate Change. They signed a letter urging the government to do more to tackle this problem. Janet Blake, head of Global Corporate Social Responsibility at BT, says that she would like to see incentives that find ways of rewarding those companies that focus on climate change by making investments in green business models. BT has made it clear that it has an ambitious plan to reduce carbon dioxide emissions. Its strategy includes steps to reduce the company's carbon footprint as well as those of customers, suppliers and employees. BT has actually pledged to achieve an 80% reduction by the year 2016, which will require further efficiency improvements. Controversies World Wide Web Hyperlink Patent In 2001, BT discovered it owned a patent which it believed gave it patent rights on the use of hyperlink technology on the World Wide Web. The corresponding UK patent had already expired, but the US patent was valid until 2006. On February 11, 2002, BT began a court case relating to its claims in a US federal court against the Internet service provider Prodigy Communications Corporation. In the case British Telecommunications plc v. Prodigy the United States District Court for the Southern District of New York ruled on August 22, 2002 that the BT patent was not applicable to web technology and granted Prodigy's request for summary judgment of non-infringement. Behavioral Targeting In early 2008 it was announced that BT had entered into a contract with the spyware company form to intercept and analyze their users' clickstream data and sell the anonymized aggregate information as part of Form's OIX advertising service. The practice, known as behavioral targeting, and condemned by critics as data pimping, came under intense fire from various Internet communities and other interested parties who believe that the interception of data without the consent of users and website owners is illegal under UK law. At a more fundamental level, many have argued that the ISPs and form have no right to sell a commodity to which they have no claim of ownership. In response to questions about form and the interception of data by the Webwise system Sir Tim Berners-Lee, credited as the creator of the World Wide Web Protocol, indicated his disapproval of the concept and is quoted as saying of his data and web history. It's minor euro you can't have it. If you want to use it for something, then you have to negotiate with me. I have to agree, I have to understand what I'm getting in return. I myself feel that it is very important that my ISP supplies internet to my house like the water company supplies water to my house. It supplies connectivity with no strings attached. My ISP doesn't control which websites I go to, it doesn't monitor which websites I go to. A Euro Sir Tim Berners-Lee, 2008. Alleged complicity with drone strikes in Yemen and Somalia, in September 2012, BT entered into a $23 million deal with the U.S. military to provide a key communications cable connecting RAF Cruton, a U.S. military base on U.K. soil, with Camp Lamonia, a large U.S. base in Djibouti. Camp Limonia is used as a base for American drone attacks in Yemen and Somalia, 
and has been described by The Economist as the most important base for drone operations outside the war zone of Afghanistan. Human rights groups including Reprieve and Amnesty International have criticized the use of armed drones outside declared war zones. Evidence produced by the Bureau of Investigative Journalism and Stanford University's International Human Rights and Conflict Resolution Clinic suggests that drone strikes have caused substantial civilian casualties, and may be illegal under international law. In 2013, BT was the subject of a complaint to the Department of Business, Innovation and Skills under the OECD Guidelines for Multinational Enterprises following their refusal to explain whether or not their infrastructure was used to facilitate drone strikes. The subsequent refusal of this complaint was appealed in May 2014, on the basis that the UK National Contact Point a Euro unregistered trademark S decision did not follow the OECD guidelines. The issue of bias was also raised, due to the appointment of Lord Ian Livingston as Government Minister for the Department which processed the complaint. Livingston had occupied a senior position at BT when the cable between RAF Cruton and Camp Lamonia was originally built. See also Sheriff, References Further reading, Baldwin, FGC The History of the Telephone in the United Kingdom, Foreman Peck, J. The Development and Diffusion of Telephone Technology in Britain, 1900 Euro 1940, Transactions of the Newcomen Society 63, pp 165 a Euro 180. Foreman Peck, J., and Millwood, Our Public and Private Ownership of British Industry 1820 a Euro 1990. Hazelwood, A. The Origins of the State Telephone Service in Britain Oxford Economic Papers. 513 a Euro 25 in JSTOR, Hullcom, A. N. The Telephone in Great Britain. Quarterly Journal of Economics 21 No. 1 pages 96 to 135 in JSTOR, Jonasson, Neil. Ring Up Britain, The Early Years of the Telephone in the United Kingdom, Johnston, SF. The Telephone in Scotland. In, K. Veitch, ed., Transport and Communications. Publications of the European Ethnological Research Centre. Scottish Life and Society. A Compendium of Scottish Ethnology, pages 716 to 727 online, Miguel, Frank N. Great Events from History 2, Business and Commerce Series, Volume 1 1897 to 1923 pages 218 to 23. Historiography, Mayer, Hugo Richard. Public Ownership and the Telephone in Great Britain, Restriction of the Industry by the State and the Municipalities Online, Pitt, D.C. The Telecommunications Function in the British Post Office. A Case Study of Bureaucratic Adaption. Robertson, John Henry. The Story of the Telephone A History of the Telecommunications Industry of Britain, Tucker, D.G. The Early Development of the British Underground Trunk Telephone Network, Transactions of the Newcomen Society 49, 57-74. Wetton, Jenny. The Early History of Telephony in Manchester. 1877 a Euro 1898, Transactions of the Newcomen Society 77 No. 2 pages 245 a Euro 260. External links, BT Group, BT Group Companies Grouped at Open Corporates.